Hello, in this episode I want to talk about water, some of the properties of water and how water behaves under certain circumstances. So first off, we're going to keep it real simple and we're going to talk about the six properties of water. The first property is it's a solvent, which it's molecular stuff. Uh, there's a negatively charged uh, oxygen molecule with two positively charged hydrogen molecules, which means it breaks things up, like dissolving sugar in sweet tea, or you can wash your hands with it. The second and third property of water is cohesion and adhesion, which they kind of work together. We talked about how this negatively and positively charged molecules, well, they kind of hook together in a chain. That's the adhesion and cohesion. Kind of like this tree here. Trees don't have hearts that beat that pump the water from the ground to their leaves. It kind of works off evaporation and it sucks itself up the tree because of that cohesion and adhesion. Uh, it's the same reason why some bugs can walk across water. It creates that surface tension because it's those molecular bonds. The fourth property of water. Well, ice floats. Now, the reason behind that is most things contract or shrink when they get cold, but water, it expands. When it turns into ice, it expands because those molecules are getting farther and farther apart. Why is this important in plumbing? Pipes can freeze. If pipes freeze, they like to bust, especially your old copper and your CPVC. The new stuff's a little more resilient to it, but there's your fourth property, ice floats. fifth property of water. Now, if you work here in the south, in the summertime, it gets hot. You're going to sweat. Water evaporates really fast under high temperatures. What that does for us when we sweat, it's taking that heat away from us and it's putting that heat back into the air. So the fifth property of water, it evaporates fast under heat. Now we're at our last in my list of six properties of water, and it is a high specific heat. Now what that basically means is it takes water a long time to heat up, and it takes water a long time to cool down, such as this water heater. If I were to hook this water heater up, fill it full of water, and then turn it on, it's going to take about 30 to 45 minutes before it's fully ready with 50 gallons of hot water. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, a buddy of mine had a party, his parents were out of town, it was just a handful of us, and we were like, oh man, let's get in the hot tub, and we turned that hot tub on, and that thing was still cold four hours later, so we didn't get to play in the hot tub, but that's basically it, a high specific heat, it takes water a long time to warm up, and a long time to cool off, kind of helps keep things balanced here on planet Earth. Now, let's move into some more of the related to plumbing, and we're going to start with gravity. Well, we had some pretty good rains last night, and I just wanted to take this as an opportunity to kind of show you what water does. Water's always going to follow the path of least resistance, and as you can see, there's some trails running through here from where the water ran. Now, the water didn't run up over this hill. It found this little low spot, this little valley, and it flowed down that way. Um, it's not going to climb a hill, it's not going to go over a mountain, it's going to get in that valley and find its way down to that lowest spot. Now I'm going to show you something else real quick. Now I wanted to show you this as well too. As that water was finding its path of least resistance and rolling down this hill, when it was traveling fast it picked up a lot of this light sand uh, material and as it came down the hill here and slowed down into this low spot, it dumped that sediment because it didn't have the speed to push that, that uh, dirt and sand anymore. Uh, and then the water eventually found its way on down the ditch and left this behind. Uh, this happens a lot in nature. It's where we get river deltas, uh, salt marshes, things like that. Uh, and if you're ever in a coastal port, you see them out there dredging, it's because this debris came with the fast moving water and then when it slowed down 
it dumped it out. So what was the point of me showing you those washouts out in the yard where that sediment was left behind when that water slowed down and got into those lower areas? Well, your waste lines on your plumbing systems, they work off of gravity. It's that same principle where water's looking for that lowest spot, that path of least resistance. Now, if your pipe is flat or it just barely has fall to it, it can leave some of that waste material, the stuff that's coming off of your toilets, behind in the pipe and can cause a clog later on. Now, it's also the same if it's pitched too much. That water's gonna travel so fast that it leaves that waste material behind in the pipe and you could have a clog there as well. So your plumbing systems have to be pitched anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch fall uh, per foot for it to work properly. So check out this little diagram and we'll move on to the next thing. Water. Water's got weight. Every gallon of water weighs about 8.35 pounds. So just remember that. Uh, we've got a couple 200 gallon tanks out here that we use for testing when we don't have water on site. And I think it's hilarious. These guys will start filling them up and they might not have that tank where they want it. So they'll try to move it when it's about halfway full. And those tanks, they're 200 gallons. If you fill it all the way up to the top, that's going to be well over 1,600 pounds. You're not moving that. So just remember that uh, a gallon of water weighs about 8 pounds or 8.3 pounds. Uh, the other thing, I was always told that a 3-inch section of pipe will hold a gallon of water at a certain length. And so I did some experimenting here. I started off with a, a one-foot piece and I got about half a gallon. Well, so I figured out, well, let's go up to two feet at 24 inches, and it still didn't take the whole gallon. So just for fun, I cut one at 28 inches, which actually means something in the plumbing world. But let's go ahead and test this. Got a whole gallon of water. Just a little bit, all the way at the top. Just a little bit left in the jug, uh, which I think that's really neat, and it's close enough. So you could say every 28 inches of Schedule 40 three-inch pipe or your foam core DWV uh, will hold a gallon of water. It'll help you figure out some things. It's not quite that right amount, but uh, it's close enough. The other thing is, this is 28 inches of water column. Uh, it's a magic number, 28 inches of water column at the base gives you about one pound per square inch, one PSI. Pretty neat stuff. Well that's going to do it for this episode about water. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't move too fast and maybe you learned something. But uh, just remember, without water, wouldn't none of us or none of these little flowers be here. So, thanks a lot guys.